Welcome to the Egg Whisperer Show, a program exclusively designed to promote reproductive health awareness and discuss fertility preservation options. Here is your host, the Harvard-educated fertility specialist, Dr. Amy. She's known as the Egg Whisperer. Fertility expert, Dr. Amy Vazadeh. And you have yet another success story just launched by an East Bay fertility doctor. Hi everyone, thanks for joining tonight's Egg Whisperer show. This is a special show because I've been in practice now for 10 years. So that's 10 years of baby making. So basically, after high school at 17, I went to college and I got my bachelor's of science and then from there, I went to medical school at UCLA. After seven years um, of a combined bachelor science medical degree program, I then did my OBGYN residency at Beth Israel Deaconess in Boston. From there, I went to Michigan and figured out how an egg and sperm make a baby. And that's what makes me a reproductive endocrinology and an infertility specialist. I know that's a mouthful. And my sister makes fun of me all the time. She's like, dude, it took you 15 years to figure out how to make a baby. It did. It really did. So now that I've been here, I look back and I say, wow, so much has changed in the last 10 years. In 2008, we were doing mostly day three transfers. And we were, when we were doing genetic testing of embryos, we were doing a biopsy on eight cell embryos on day three and then transferring two days later. Today, we're doing day five, six, and even seven day freezes after we're doing PGS on blastocysts, which are embryos that have hundreds of cells. The other things that have changed are our ability to do extended carrier screening, reproductive genetic profiling, as well as other implantation testing. And I'll talk more about that tonight as well. Another exciting thing that I think is gonna also open up how we can help patients who are having repetitive implantation failure is the field of reproductive immunology. So we're learning a lot more about how we can help patients with drugs like, for example, Neupogen, intralipid infusions. So I think we're just at the beginning of how we can really give patients a more personalized fertility care plan based on testing that's done before you actually go through treatment. So that's what I try and talk to patients about diagnosis before treatment, and how to get fertility screening in five simple steps. So we'll talk about those steps and all the things that I've been up to the last 10 years. So if you know a little bit about me, I started throwing egg freezing parties in 2014. I came up with the idea because every time I go to a party, everyone talks to me about fertility. So I thought about, you know, having a great setup to basically talk about fertility in a fun way. It's not about selling egg freezing, it's not about freezing people's eggs, but it's just about letting everyone know that you can freeze your eggs and what it takes and that just means that you're gonna get a fertility lesson from me. Everyone knows you can get your boobs done, but not everyone knows that you can get your eggs frozen. I think the message is out now that a woman can freeze her eggs. So I talk about it in a really positive way. I tell women that egg freezing is for women in their 20s, 30s, and even 40s. I have frozen eggs of women in their 40s to then use them still in their 40s and have successful pregnancies. So without getting your levels checked, you wouldn't know if this is a possibility for you. But it's really important to get your levels checked as early as, for example, even 21 or 25 to find out what your eggs have in store for you. I don't want anyone to look back and say, I wish I didn't know. I don't want any woman to feel like they were standing at a fertility egg cliff or they were experiencing or part of a fertility time bomb. That just doesn't happen. Your eggs just don't run out overnight. They run out over decades. And so with these simple tests and tools that women can use, they can then be better informed and then talk about options with their doctors. So be sure to get your levels checked. And if you want me to throw an egg freezing party for you, let me know. You can go to eggfreezingparty.com and reach out to me and I can throw a party for your business, your group, your club. I throw parties for medical schools, for professional schools, business schools, law schools. So you know how to find me. I'm pretty easy to find. So at my first egg freezing party, I did the lessons. I taught people how to get their levels checked. I told people what, lesson, what levels to get checked. And the women came back to me and they said, you know, Dr. Amy, I went to my doctor and I said, I want my levels checked. And they said, no, 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 you're too young. You're too healthy. You don't need your levels to be checked. And that's just not true. Your fertility isn't skin deep. You can't look in the mirror, take a selfie and then send it somewhere and have someone tell you what your fertility levels are like. It's just not possible. So without doing the blood work, without answering a fertility questionnaire, without talking to someone about your fertility history or getting your reproductive genetic profile done, you really don't know enough about your fertility. So that's why I started eggwhisper.com so that women can get their levels checked. Men can also get their sperm checked through this website, but it also 
offers people a way to learn about themselves um, without working too hard. It's accessible, it's um, I think very reasonable from a cost standpoint so that you don't feel like you need to spend a lot of money to get simple tests done to learn about yourself. And then I thought, you know what? Men need education too. I threw one sperm freezing party and you can imagine how that went. I'm joking, of course, because you can actually freeze sperm at a sperm freezing party. Let me just say that that was just a little bit awkward, but it's always fun to talk to everyone about fertility, no matter who you are, what your gender, or your sexual orientation. It's really important to educate also about sperm health and what it takes to be uh, super healthy. You know, I talk a lot about trimester zero, and that's the trimester before pregnancy. Most of us think of preparing for pregnancy as far as you know, which bar we should go to, but that's actually not how it should be. Everyone should be getting their sperm health checked. We talk to women about taking prenatal vitamins. Men should have the same education about taking supplements to make sure their sperm is healthy. You know, don't drink, don't smoke, don't cook your balls. Those are all things that I've been saying over the last 10 years, and I'm sure I'll be doing it beyond. So through my egg freezing party and my egg whisper and all my education, um, I realized that there are a lot of women out there who wanted to freeze their eggs and just couldn't afford it. And I find that there are a lot of people out there that really do want to give the gift of life. And those are women who actually already are donating their eggs. So I came up with a program called Freeze and Share. So you can go to freezeandshare.com and if you're a young woman who's considering freezing their eggs and would also be open to donating half of them, well, this is probably the right program for you. So part of the program includes all the fees all the medications, your travel costs, your mileage, and five years of storage. What comes with the program is very careful counseling. There's a legal consent form that you sign, and you actually will find out where your eggs go if you would like. When you think of an anonymous donation, you're thinking that both the recipient and the donor have no idea who each other is, but there's no such thing as anonymous anymore. If you're giving someone your DNA, you're actually telling them everything about you. You hear these stories in the news all the time and more and more now where people are finding their donor siblings or DNA siblings as I've heard it called through tests like Ancestry.com. So if you're an egg donor and you want to actually have half your eggs frozen for you, this is a great program for you. If you're also someone who's considering freezing their eggs and want to give the gift of life, this is also a program for you. And if you're a recipient that wants to use an egg donor in a really, what I would say, a conscientious way, this is a really good program. So you know that you're, you're giving back, you're giving something to the egg donor at the same time. You're not taking her eggs when she's the most fertile. In fact, you're helping her preserve them at the same time. And you're creating a new type of family. And that's why I started freezeandshare.com. So take a look at the website. And if you wanna learn more, let me know. So the next thing I started doing were these YouTube shows. I don't know if you know this, but there are over 20 million people in this country who do not have access to fertility treatment. So everyone, for the most part, if you have a Wi-Fi signal or internet access, you have access to YouTube. So through the YouTube shows, what I'm hoping and I'm seeing it happen across the globe, that I can basically share my positive message about how fertility is not something that should be taboo for us to talk about. I want to destigmatize it. I want to make access better. I want to help people who don't have access and don't necessarily have the financial means. I want to teach them the lessons here on this show so they can take this information no matter where you are and take it to a local doctor and talk to them about the necessary tests that you might need after watching this show. So I hope this show's helping. And I get people that show, send me show ideas all the time about things they want me to talk about. And I'm gonna do a show just on that. So if you have a topic and you think that there's something you want to hear more about, let me know. You can email me at email at eggwhisper.com and I look forward to hearing from you as well. So I talk about this all the time and it's super fun for me. It's called the Tushy Method and I give Tushy Talks and I give Tushy Consults and when patients come to me, they say, Dr. Amy, I had my Tushy checked. I want to hear what you have to think. And this is basically fertility screening made easy. I tell people that life is complex. Fertility screening doesn't have to be. It often seems confusing, like where do I start? People often ask me, like I'm having fertility problems, I don't know what to do. Well, this is a very simple guide. 
So these five steps will tell you basically what the problems are and what you can do to make things even better. And what I always ask my patients is this, you know, how old are you and how many kids do you want? And do you think you'll be able to accomplish that with the fertility levels that you have today? Should you start considering fertility preservation? And so in order to know what fertility treatment to consider and what's best for you and what your chances are, you have to know what the diagnosis is. So by getting your T for tubes checked, getting an ultrasound of your uterus, getting your sperm health checked, and your hormones checked, and lastly, your genetic profile done, and having someone put all that information together, you're gonna to have a really good picture about what your fertility is all about. And that's what the Tushy Method is also all about. So you can go to tushymethod.com if you wanna get your Tushy checked. Um, we do tushy checks all the time and we can coordinate them anywhere uh, as long as you have facilities that are close by. We have patients that come in also for a complete tushy evaluation and it's a fun way for me to talk about fertility and uh, hopefully it makes it seem a little less complex and a little bit easier to understand. So after years and years and probably over 40 egg freezing parties, I thought it was important to start talking about egg thawing parties. And now I'm not throwing egg thawing parties, but I talk on my egg whisperer show, and you can find it on YouTube, about the important steps that a person needs to take when it comes to thawing their eggs. Your frozen eggs are a pr precious commodity. You only get one chance to make it right. So I teach people the simple steps that I talk to my patients about as to how to prepare for thawing your eggs. And that includes looking at sperm health, it includes looking at uterine health, doing implantation testing, testing, and much of the same steps that are in the Tushy Method before you thaw your eggs. I don't take embryos for granted, just like I don't take frozen eggs for granted. I know that if, let's say, you're using your frozen eggs at 46 years of age, you can't go back in, in time and freeze more. So I want to make sure that every chance that I have to give patients a pregnancy with their frozen eggs, especially even their embryos, especially their embryos, that they never look back with fertility regret and they feel like they did their very best chance with the technology that we have today to reach their goals and the family size that they want. And so the next thing uh, that I have come up with in the last 10 years, which I think is really a fun and easy way to think about the steps that are involved with IVF, and that is the egg whisper diet. And no, I'm not a chef, I don't do recipes, but I do recipes as to how to make a momlet. And that involves diagnosis, IVF, endometrial testing, and then transfer. So if you think about the egg, egg whisper diet every single time before you do IVF, I can't guarantee a pregnancy, but I can guarantee that you'll never look back and feel like you missed a step. You never missed a chance to give yourself, like I said, the very best chance for pregnancy. Because in the end, each embryo will have a chance. It'll have a viability score based on the quality, the genetics, the mito score, and then it's up to chance and a lot of nature as to whether that embryo is gonna stick and grow. So with science, hopefully, you'll give that embryo the best chance that it possibly has. So that's why I came up with the Egg Whisperer Diet. And people have been telling me, again, all over the world who've been watching my show, that they took these steps and they found that, them, that they were very, very helpful. So these are tips and tricks that I share in my office with a little bit, or I should say a lot of humor all day long. So hopefully this will also help you if you're learning about this for the first time. So the most recent thing that I try and teach people about is the fertility team and building that team. So depending on what your diagnosis is, um, everyone's gonna have a different team that they'll need to support them. For example, if you have PCOS or endometriosis or secondary infertility or repetitive abnormal pregnancies. So depending on the diagnosis, your team is gonna feel and look different. And the T stands for therapy, E is exercise and eating, A is acupuncture, M is meditation and mindfulness. So I ask patients to find a mantra, I ask them to find an alter ego, whether it's a superhero, someone in a book that they read about, someone to help them feel inspired, and I talk to patients about ways to find joy each and every day. So build your fertility team if you don't have one, if you need help building that team, you know where to, f to, to find, the <laughs> find that help, that's with me, and I can help you with that, of course. And the funnest thing, I think, is what my patients get in my office, um, I just ran out and I'm coming in with more sizes very soon, is my Egg Whisperer pant. So it's a yoga pant with a little secret, and it basically helps patients feel comfortable and cozy, 
and no one ever sits half naked for, for a very long time, um, and especially around transfer time or procedures like IUI. The secret, I should say, is an opening that allows a speculum inside the vagina very easily for easy access during procedures so that, for example, when you're walking in for your IUI or your embryo transfer, you don't have six strangers wa walking in and you're feeling very vulnerable. So I'm hoping that these pants will help patients feel a little bit more comfortable during the process. So they'll be available very soon for people everywhere. So thank you for the last 10 years. I'm looking forward to 30 more at least and more developments to come. I just can't believe that it's already been 10. Um, I have uh, babies that I see in our community here that are not babies anymore. They're in the fourth grade uh, and entering fifth grade very soon. So it's, um, it's really fun to be a part of this community. It's an amazing experience to be able to help patients. And I know that I can't help everybody, but I know that the people that I, I help, even if it's not with a successful pregnancy, that there are always ways that they can be a parent and they'll never look back and say that they could have done more with the science that we have. So thank you guys for watching. You know where to find me on the show, eggwhisper.com, on my Medium account. You can read more blog stories on dramy.org and of course subscribe to my newsletter. I hope you guys have a great night and I'll see you soon. Good night. Welcome to the Egg Whisperer Show, a program exclusively designed to promote reproductive health awareness and discuss fertility preservation options. Here is your host, the Harvard-educated fertility specialist, Dr. Amy. She's known as the Egg Whisperer. Fertility expert, Dr. Amy Abazadeh. And you have yet another success story just launched by an East Bay fertility doctor. 